Hey folks, Country Prepper here. Well, to continue on with the basics of prepping, I want to talk a little bit about first aid. And uh, I know this is a, a really fun topic, but it's something important and it needs to be covered. So uh, one thing I want to make very clear is this does not include any major trauma, no bullet wounds, no major lacerations, anything like that. This is very basics of prepping and uh, just really basic first aid. And also, I'm not going to cover any medicine in this video. I'm going to save that for another video. So one of the things I want to start off by saying is uh, a lot of new preppers will start out and just go get themselves a decent sized first aid kit. And that is a good first step to begin with. But these are missing a lot of important things. So one of the first things I want to touch base on is band-aids and you guys know if you've been watching me for any given time I am not a big fan of band-aids um, usually in my opinion I, I just I don't like the adhesive on my skin I don't like ripping the hair out of my uh, arms or legs or whatever when uh, when you have to remove the band-aid so I prefer to wrap things up if I possibly can but uh, I do store band-aids I do keep them on hand and uh, we have a, a pretty big assortment of them and that's one of the things that I want to mention is um, don't just go buy a box of a hundred variety pack that's just not quite going to cut it uh, you need to have a lot of different sizes and you know like this the extra large ones that's something very important um, you just never know when you're gonna need uh, to cover a larger wound of some kind that doesn't quite require um, anything, uh, you know, like a major wound would. So, band-aids are a good thing to have on hand, but uh, most of the time, uh, if you're going to use a band-aid on it, you probably don't need one in the first place. But uh, if you are in unsanitary conditions, you're definitely going to want to have them, something to cover up the wound. So, uh, continuing on with wrapping things up the way that I prefer to go is uh, I use several different things. Uh, one of the things, non-stick pads, not gauze pads. Gauze pads suck. <laughs> if, if you've ever had a wound and uh, covered it up with a gauze pad, wrapped it up, and then went to change out the dressing, uh, that gauze, gauze pad will stick to your wound uh, when it bleeds. So, um, not a good idea. Trust me on that one. Learn from my mistake. That sucked really bad. I learned that lesson one time and one time only. So non-stick pads, very important. And same thing with the band-aids. You're going to want several different sizes. So uh, this is just a couple examples. I have, I think, like five different sizes that we keep on hand. Uh, we have a big tote full of uh, stuff like this. So what I use to wrap those up instead of using tape because, again, I don't like the adhesive on my skin. And uh, I use this called tender tape that's just this brand uh, a lot of this stuff I just grab here and there at the dollar store uh, this it's self adhering tape so it's actually kind of like a uh, compression bandage like an ace bandage but uh, it sticks to itself so you don't need any of the uh, little closure them little metal clips or anything like that you're not going to need any uh, safety pins or anything to hold it together it sticks to itself so that's why I use this stuff and these are for two rolls, I think they're like four bucks at the dollar store, so uh, uh, definitely a good thing to have on hand, and I have a ton of these, so I, I use them anytime I have any type of injury. Uh, speaking of uh, wrapping things up as well, um, and ace bandages, I prefer these instead of ace bandages. They're reusable. You can use them, you know, three or four times depending on how what kind of situation you're in, whether you're getting dirty or whether you have uh, uh, anything, you know, getting on it. But anyhow, you can reuse it a few times if uh, if it doesn't get, you know, like disgusting or anything. But uh, uh, this also is self-adhering. And uh, these are also made by several, several different companies. This is just what they have at the dollar store. So uh, I grabbed quite a few of those here and there. So... Uh, what I put on a wound is, uh, you know, triple antibiotic ointment, yes. And uh, I prefer, they have cream. I prefer the ointment just because it repels uh, water. But I also get the stuff 
that has the pain relief in it. So just something to keep in mind. Usually if you have a wound, it's probably going to hurt. doesn't have hurt to have that pain relief stuff in there. Uh, when it comes to cleaning wounds, the, the alcohol swabs like that come in a first aid kit are very, most of the time, most first aid kits that I've seen, they're very small and, uh, um, what's the word I want to look for? They're just, they're, they're just kind of chintzy. I, I don't know how else to explain it. So, uh, where I look for my alcohol pads is in the, uh, diabetic section of, uh, the drugstore or Walmart or wherever you go. So, uh, that's, that's the, one of the brands that I have on hand. I have a couple different brands of those and I've tried, uh, Tried quite a few different brands to see which ones I like, and uh, uh, that's one of the ones that I do like. They're very, uh, they're thick, and they don't fall apart. They don't, they're easy to hold on to, and they actually hold the alcohol a little longer. Um, a lot of the very thin ones that are ones that are just like paper thin, they will, uh, the alcohol just evaporates out of them in no time. So, uh, the ones from the diabetic section are usually a lot better. Uh, also, to get along with uh, sterilizing things, um, keep your hands clean, things like that. Uh, some hand sanitizer. This is just one of the little travel bottles that I have. I usually keep it on my desk, but uh, just for an example, um, keep bigger, much bigger bottles in, uh, in our tote. But uh, also, another really small example, this came out of a first aid kit, but nitrile gloves. Um, got a couple of boxes of those on hand. So uh, uh, that's really important, especially if you're working on somebody else. If, if somebody came off the street you, that you don't know or you're not really familiar with, uh, if you had to help apply some first aid to somebody, you're definitely going to want to wear the nitrile gloves. But, uh, you know, even if you're doing it on yourself, keeping... You know, if there's any chance of infection, things like that, it's a good idea just to go ahead and wear them. So, uh, along with the wound dressing and clean, cleaning things up, my dog's going nuts, it's storming outside. But uh, this is something I really like. I use it a lot, and it also has the pain relieving stuff in there, and uh, this stuff just works great. I've, I've been using it for years. So,. Uh, uh, the only place I have been able to find, well, they have it at the drugstore here in town, but uh, they usually have it at Walmart as well. So uh, then, the thing that most people already know, and this is probably just a no-brainer, but peroxide, you're going to want to have a lot of that. That'll help uh, clean out a wound, disinfect things, and then also, of course, alcohol. So make sure 91%, uh, uh, it's pretty good... Uh, pretty good amount there so they do have different stages of alcohol so just keep that in mind uh, along with cleaning up wounds and, and other, other things it's used for a lot of different stuff of course you want cut cotton balls and q-tips on hand so uh, what else I think I've got oh N95 masks just in case, uh, and I, it, this kind of goes along with medicine, but it, uh, it's also just part of basic first aid. Um, if there's people sick in your house and it happens to be like a grid down situation or, you know, bad storm comes through in the winter, people are sick, just kind of prevent preventative maintenance right there. So I think that's just about everything. Oh, uh, <clears throat> almost forgot this. Uh, a lot of times, well, in, in any high-stress situation, people are going to have accidents. You're not, uh, you don't have your full capacity, brain capacity, along with you. So, uh, um, you know, there's going to be injuries and there's going to be sprains and bruises and things like that. So, cold compresses and heat compresses, I just keep the, the hand warmers like a, you would take uh uh, out hiking in the winter time or put it in your car in the winter time things like that and then also uh, pain relieving patches those things actually work really really great and then uh, <clears throat> to go along with bruises and sprains and this also relieves quite a few other things Epsom salts and uh, you can buy these in a lot bigger packages I just grabbed this one for uh, an example since I have so much stuff on the table but uh, Lots and lots and lots of Epsom salts. Um, 
if you're sore in any way, this will help. If you have a sprain or bruise or anything like that, this will help. A good hot bath with Epsom salts is just a magnificent thing. And also, um, it tastes horrible. I have tried it. It's uh, you, you can use it as a laxative, but it tastes horrible. Um, mix it with a little bit of water and, you know, follow. they actually have directions for it on the package. But uh, I will tell you it's bad. It's really, really bad. Uh, I think I would rather have a mouthful of uh, Mormon, or Mor Morton salt. Can't talk again. So, anyhow, uh, I think that's it this time. <laughs> so, uh, I, I found a couple other things on the table and remembered something else I wanted to say. So, uh, there you go, guys. That's that's what I think every prepper from beginner to doomsday prepper should have uh, at, at the very least. So, um, you know, of course, there's going to be higher quantities of certain things than others. But, uh, you know, like I said, with things like this and this, they're somewhat reusable a couple of times so you won't need quite as many of those as you'll need your nonstick pads or things like that um if you go a step further you can get the big um i have a couple of them here actually you can get the really big uh extra absorbent pads if there is uh more blood than you're expecting uh but that's that's another thing that I'm going to cover in some of the uh, trauma things that I'll talk about in another video. So I will shut up now and uh, uh, let me know what you guys think. If there's anything I missed, please leave it in the comments section. I always, uh, you know, like I've said before, I'll say it again. I cannot always remember everything when I go to do a video like this. I do prepare ahead of time and try to think of everything, but... You just never know. Uh, you might miss something, or you guys might have some information that I'm not privy to. So uh, always, I always highly suggest uh, uh, or really appreciate the comments and any suggestions you might have. And other people can go by, uh, you know, after, after this video has been around for a while, they can scroll down through the comments and uh, maybe pick up some extra information. So thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.